This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. You know what happens next. Cue the unboxing music. Go on, lad. Yes, indeed, the Yamaha Pacifica 311H. Um, I've been curious about this guitar ever since I first saw it, uh, gosh, about 10 years ago now. Um, you know, this was when I was still pretty much a dyed in the wool strap player. I hadn't had my, um, Telecaster epiphany by then. Um, but you know, when I saw it, I thought, okay, it's kind of close enough to a strat to be, to, to be interesting to me. Big fat single coil neck pickup in the form of a uh, P90. I do love a nice big, uh, fruity neck single coil. Uh, humbucker at the, uh, in the back end for the shouty stuff. Single coil switching. Um, you know, and a tortoiseshell pit guard. You know, it's like there was somebody in Yamaha's head office with a picture of me on his desk and he said, Let's build that fat bloke a guitar. Oh, that's how it seemed anyway. Um, so yeah, I've been curious about this guitar for a while. You may remember that I did, uh, all oh, a few years ago, a, like sort of a, a, a series of upgrades to a uh, Pacifica that I bought for pennies in a local pawn shop. Um, that, um, you know, I was trying to get close to something like this. And then even more recently, I did, um, you know, that, uh, review and kind of once over of the, uh, of the Pacifica 112 that a chap called Steve had done some upgrades on and donated to Zoe's place. Um, and I got a video out of that. Well, you know, I finally took the plunge and just, you know, kind of bought the, th the, uh, the Pacifica. And, um, so far, initial impressions are good. Um, you know, I'm going to be forming impressions as I go throughout this video. Got a little bit of housekeeping to do later on in the video concerning that, um, Harley Benton versus Epiphone blind test from last week. More on that later, but let's get, uh, this out of the way first. Um, it's a lovely thing. Um, I've got to tell you, it's, um, it feels, I mean, straight out the box, beautifully set up. Um, you know, Action is, well, let's have a look. Let's get the old steel rule out and measure what sort of action we've got at the 12th fret. Yeah, that could probably go down a hair's breadth. That's, that's about two millimeter action at the moment at the 12th fret. So I could probably take that down just a touch, but, um, you know, it's by no means a high action guitar at the moment. So I'll probably do a little bit of setup work on it. Uh, before I either move it on or decide to keep it. I think we know which side the coin's going to uh, land on that one. Um, so I'll put the specs to the guitar down in the description, but basically what you see is what you get. It's, um, you know, it's essentially Yamaha's take on the Strat shape, their, their Pacifica model. You've got from the top end, you've got uh, Grover locking machine heads, uh, you've got, uh, I think it's a graph tech nut, uh, 22 frets. Um, the neck is just your standard Pacifica neck profile. I'm sure most of us have, uh, played one at some point or other, being probably the best selling guitar in the UK. Uh, the Pacifica 112 at least has been the best selling guitar in the UK for about 30 years now. So, you know, I'm sure most of us have had our hands on one. Like most, uh, guitars these days, um, you know, manufacturers are aiming for the center ground with their uh, neck profiles. I cannot imagine anybody picking up this guitar and thinking, Dear me, this is a neck that I'm going to have to take some getting used to. It's comfortable. It's as a nice low ish action. Uh, then down here, we've got an Alnico. I think it's an Alnico five, uh, P90. 
I believe it's an Omnicore 5 uh, humbucker there. Three-way switch. Uh, then master volume and master tone. And you've got single coil switching for the humbucker on the tone control. Um, one thing, as you know, I always like to do is to dial in a fairly chunky sound um, and see how it cleans up from the guitar's volume control. As usual, when I'm doing these, um, you know, kind of walk through, talk through uh, videos, uh, I'm plugged into the Sonic Kick Twiggy Blues with um, a fairly crunchy sound dialed in. Let me show you. <laughs> There we go. So that's, you know, that's by no means a clean sound. Uh, let's give it a fighting chance by uh, going to single coil uh, mode and then just back the volume off on the guitar and... cleans up yep, lovely let's go to the middle position which is you know probably one of my favorite places to uh, mess around on a clean sound you know for sort of funky sort of stuff Um, that works. It's um, it's just something archetypally kind of fat and fendery about it. It's you know, as I've said before, there's um, there's a lot of manufacturers these days going for this humbucker P90 combination. Um, you know, I think I think this might have been one of the the, the first um, guitars on on the sort of leading edge of that about 10 years or so ago when the when this model came out i can't think that I think of too many uh guitars that um that were on that trend before this or certainly you know like because now you've got um everybody from yamaha through to prs doing this you know with their vela model i know that's not a proper p90 in the neck in that one but it's close enough that you know it bears comparison there's the p90 by itself I always think of a P90 in a neck position as, as being like um, like a Telecaster neck pickup, but just, you know, that's had an extra week to pick that morning. It's, um, you know, it's got that sort of fruitiness that you expect from a, uh, a Telecaster neck pickup. It just makes you want to start kind of playing, you know, kind of... Etc. I used to, I used to know that's all. Um... But yeah, but it's just like a fatter version of that uh, Telecaster neck single coil. Um, you know, and I suppose you could kind of make the case that the uh, the bridge pickup has a kind of a hint of Telecaster about... You know, let's just go for a bit more volume. Don't you hate it when your fingers just freeze and you can't play anything? kind of thing i do apologize for my um slightly uncorporated fingers today i've just been walking the dog and it's cold outside anyway yeah um so nicely balanced guitar if you do that you know no neck dive or anything like that um it just it's it's not a guitar that you physically have to you know hold whilst playing it um the satin finish on it is is very very appealing it's a very tactile uh experience especially here um you know i do like a bit of a perch on here if this was um you know if i was if that bloke in yamaha's head office had been building a guitar for the fat bloke in red car um then they would probably not, not chamfered this quite as much uh it does 
feel it's got that sort of stratty thing of feeling like you're sliding downhill a little bit but you know just that feeling of satin finished timber under under your kind of forearm is um is a very pleasurable experience it's just you know i'm, I'm, I'm kind of missing me telecaster hard-edged perch there a little bit <laughs> So all in all, you know, a really nice guitar. There'll be a, um, a full sort of production piece of music, uh, featuring this guitar, uh, at a later date, you know, where it's, you're hearing all of the different, um, you know, pickup combinations and sounds in a mix and everything. So anyway, before we get, let's just, I've not really kind of shown you what the, the, the dirty sounds are like. We'll start with the, the bridge humbucker, um, with the, the volume control, you know, all the way up, uh, just to do a little bit of, uh, bluesy kind of shenanigans. <laughs> for the for your rhythm guitar part um neck p90 uh with a you know the sort of um bit more gain there and middle position It's got no surprises. Um, it does all the sounds that you would expect of this pickup, um, you know, combination. But it's you know just through the the little sonic ache, twiggy blues. So far, it's uh, it's given a good account of itself. It's a bit like uh, Mike from CGS always plays uh, every guitar, however, however high or low spec through the uh, the pocket pod. Well, my equivalent is the um, is the sonic ache, twiggy blues. Um, so as I say, we're going to be hearing this guitar in another video through, um, you know, some, some slightly more, uh, upmarket tones and, you know, in a mix with other instruments and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Well, first impressions are really rather good. Comfortable guitar to play, albeit without my, you know, kind of, um, elbow perch there, but I can just about live with that. Um, you know, set up straight out of the box, plays really nice. Uh, these feel like a set of nine gauge strings that are on here. I might be wrong, but, uh, they certainly don't feel like tens. Um, I shall have to have a look and see, but I'll be probably, uh, chucking a set of tens on it at some point. Uh, fret work fine. No kind of fret sprout or anything like that. Comfortable neck to play. No, um, no fret buzz that I've been able to determine so far. It's a Yamaha. You know, they make them well. And, um, that's certainly been my experience anyway. So, those are my first impressions of the, um, Yamaha Pacifica 311H in yellow natural satin. Now then, I mentioned earlier the uh, little bit of housekeeping. You may recall that, uh, a week ago, I did a bit of a blind test, or I challenged you guys to a bit of a blind test between the Epiphone uh, Les Paul Classic Worn and the Harley Benton SC550 Mark II with the Iron Gear Blues engine pickups. Basically, there was um, a piece of music. Uh, where you couldn't see which guitar was being played and when it was, when I was swapping from one piece of music to, to the other. And I was, um, going to give a 50 pound Amazon voucher away to anybody who could identify which guitar was being played when and when the changeovers, uh, were happening. So, well, I'll tell you what, before we uh, go any further, let's have a look at the results for that. Here's which guitars were being used and when.
did anybody get it right? Did I have to send somebody a £50 Amazon voucher because they got all of the transitions from one guitar to another, the Epiphone at this particular point, the Harley Benton at that point, and the transition at this particular time? No. (laughs) All of the people who claim that uh, you can easily tell a Harley Benton from an Epiphone Somehow couldn't on this, and we'll leave it at that. And there you go, folks. That is the video today. Uh, It's been a bit of a long one, but uh, I just need to get all of this out of the way. And uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Uh, As I say, there will be a a full-on, kind of more in-depth look at that Pacifica uh, in the coming videos at some point. I'll get round to doing that. Uh, Won't be too long before that's up. And I hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it. And uh, as we're getting close to the the tinsel-infested season of madness, I will just take this opportunity to uh, wish you all a happy Christmas and all the best for uh, the coming 12 months and the year ahead. Uh, Thank you so much for all the support that you've given me over the uh, previous 12 months. It's been a hell of a ride, hasn't it, folks? Um, you know, what with, um, you know, the world situation and everything, we'll leave it at that. Um, but you know, it's, uh, doing these videos has helped me, um, get through it all. And I hope I've helped, uh, some of you chaps as well, kind of, you know, just, uh, deal with whatever you've been having to deal with. And that is pretty much it for today, folks. As I say, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, but for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now. (laughs) 